Okay, right. Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who are uh, out there somewhere uh, to the January illustrated talk from London Canal Museum. And I'd like to welcome our speakers, Anna and Hamish, who don't seem to have surnames, but uh, anyway, we'll just call them Anna and Hamish. Um, uh, and uh, they're going to talk to you tonight about uh, their adventures across Europe in faraway countries of which we know nothing uh, on their boats. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to them and thank you all for coming and I hope you enjoy. Hi there, it's Hamish and... And I'm Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh hang on. Oh, technical problems already. Oh, there we go, okay, cool. Um, so um, um, I'm, I'm a technologist, environmental activist and filmmaker and I've lived on my boat for seven years. And I am, I'm originally from Portugal. Uh, why? That's why the weird accent. Um, I've been living in London for 15 years and I'm an architect and I am the VHF radio operator of the boat. So I'm the one that contacts all the locks. <laughs> like in the boat is, is an old North Sea oil rig lifeboat. It came with 61 seats and 61 seat belts mm -hmm. and nothing else. Uh, it's 7.2 meters long. Uh, this is the top picture is actually when I got it and the, the bottom picture is kind of a more recent one where it's fitted out for living in. But this is still work in progress and all the black is just insulation. <laughs> Not finished yet. <laughs> Not it's, finished. A, it's a never finished project, our, our lifeboat, <laughs> seven years later. So this is the introduction to the boat. Uh, we jokingly say it has five rooms. Um, at the front we have an office and then we have a bedroom, uh, a, a living room and um, we have a kitchen and a bathroom and there's a wheelhouse here. Uh, but of course, it's just one big open plan space. Mm -hmm. But it was originally designed for 61 people. So actually just for the two of us, it's actually quite spacious. It's much bigger on the inside than it looks on the outside. Uh, there's a little diagram for the side, just showing the layout, which a water tank under the bed, diesel tank at the back, and we drive actually hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the journey that we did. Um, it took us four years to get from London to Sulina on the Black Sea. Uh, it was not full, full years, of course. It was just traveling a few, a few months every, every year, which we will explain after. Um, but to, to, after Sulina, we had a few plans that I wish is going to explain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, our original plan, um, you can see down here, we ended up in Musa Lamin. We didn't go straight, we did a big detour. Our original plan was to um, head down to the Mediterranean for the winter after the first year and overwinter in the Mediterranean on the Rhone River. But um, by the time we were getting towards the end of the year, we kind of thought that the Rhone River is very big and very fast. So we'd be going down in the autumn when it might be in flood and we might get stuck and we'd be coming back up in the spring where it might be in flood and we wouldn't be able to go because we just wouldn't be able to be fast enough to go against the flow. So in the end, we overwintered in the in central France. This was the first year, right? Yeah, and the, first, the original plan. Two. The original plan two was to take was to do a circumnavigation and go all the way up into Arctic Russia, go all the way through Europe, through the Black Sea, then up the Volga, which goes for a thousand kilometers or more, right up into the Arctic, over Moscow, into the Baltic, and then down back through the Baltic and into Poland and Germany and back to London. Uh, this was our original grand plan. Uh, but for various reasons that wasn't possible, largely because um, of Brexit and the, um, the war in the Crimea, it wasn't possible to get boats past the Crimea. We're a coastal boat, so we didn't really want to go out into the deep ocean. So we were going to coastal hop and it became impossible. You couldn't actually take a leisure boat past the Crimea. Um, and the third option, uh, well, the third option was pragmatic. We decided we'd go through the Ukraine. Um, you can go up to Kiev and then to the Polish border and back to Europe. So those are our three options. Yeah, we have in the end, we, we stopped in Sulina, uh, and then we tell you what we did after. Uh, but by, by, mainly from London to Sulina, we did uh, 5,000 kilometers on inland waterways. We did more than, we passed more than 500 locks, six tunnels, eight rivers, 18 canals throughout nine countries. Um, we passed a, a super deep lock uh, that was 30 meters deep, it was very, very deep. Um, and we went past the highest navigational point uh, up to 400 meters. Um, we broke down three times and we had three leaks, mostly when we took the boat out of the water in winter and then we put it back on the water. The, sea, this, yeah. this, the, the true hull things, the, the sealants had frozen uh, yeah. and, and broken apart. Uh, so this is the first year. So the first year, as you can see, we've traveled five months. 
Um, we did from London to Mont Solomine, which is further north from, from Lyon. We did 1,330 something kilometers throughout four rivers, 13 canals, 170 locks, three tunnels, five swing bridges, and we just spent 300 liters of diesel. Uh, the boat's yeah. very efficient on fuel because the shape yeah. of the hull and uh, there's a tube around the propeller, so super efficient, almost uses no diesel at all, less than a liter an hour. Yeah. So we left London, uh, actually we left London canals first from Limehouse Marina and we went up river to Kew, to Kew to where a friend had a mooring, a tidal mooring, so we lashed our boat to him, waited for the tide to go out and then we could do some repairs on the prop shaft and just make sure everything was good on the bottom of the boat and ready for the big adventure. When uh, everything was ready, went down to Dartford. Yeah, we, yeah over, then, over, we were the second yeah. boat to um, stay overnight in Dartford in the last 40 years. Um, uh, where we were, we were kind of looking out for a three-day weather window. Uh, then we yeah, headed down to the to Medway. The Medway. They started heading towards yeah. France. Medway, Ramsgate, where people with pickup crew on the on the way. And then suddenly we we had the crew. We had the one where the window. Uh, it closed, the weather closed yeah. down, and so we only had one day, so we had to go for it. And it's just delight to go, yeah. Um, and this was our channel crossing. It took us eight hours. Uh, usually on the ferries, it takes half an hour, I think. Uh, six knots um, speed more about. or less about yeah um we were keeping an eye out for the big boats just out of the window and with um and with an app that you can see on the yes. on the graphic on the left hand side um and that blue dot is actually s in the middle of all yeah. the boats that are surrounding us. at this stage i got car sick and handed it over to anna yeah. <laughs> and yeah. she drove the rest of the way with a very competent crew it was fine the weather was fine the windows were not more than half a meter yeah. We were actually lucky with uh, the, the weather. The big boats are yeah. super fast and they don't stop and they don't maneuver. So as soon as you see one, you have to make a judgment. Do we go in front of it or behind it? Because actually you're not supposed to turn in the channel. Um, coming out of London, we were stopped by a gunboat, an English gunboat, who quizzed us, you know, what are you doing, where are you going, etc. <laughs> Very officious on the radio. And then coming into France, I think you got stopped. Uh, yeah, coming into France, there was... Um a ferry that wanted to talk to us that were very confused we were talk to us on the radio ask if we needed help then somehow they changed channels we could not communicate with him so 10 minutes later there was this big lifeboat french lifeboat coming to rescue us but then they realized that we were a pleasure boat that they just took pictures and they published it on, on social networks they thought it was very whatever. funny coming to rescue a lifeboat <laughs> yes. but we, we, yeah. we just carried on into the harbor there was um no bureaucracy yeah. uh you, they just cctv on the locks and they just let you in and suddenly you're in france um we had to get a vignette which is like um like a crt it's license a um, but it's about one third the cost of a boat in England for the same boat. Yeah. Um, we had a, we we actually had to get an ICC, which we'd organised before. Actually, we didn't quite have one when we arrived, but we soon had one after we were in France. <laughs> yeah. um, and there's no 14 day rule; you can stay stay wherever you like. Yes, and and then suddenly we were in French canals. The canals were small, uh, more or less same scale as the English ones. At least the first one, <laughs> the Canal de Calais. Uh, it was full of swing bridges in the beginning. It took us some time to understand how they work because we didn't understand how they open. Suddenly we realized that there were some lock keepers that were actually opening the lock for us. And then, so we had to wait for them to have lunch to open the, the, the locks. We spent hours waiting for, for lock keepers. Um, then they are located to us for five or six bridges and they came with us. So we were on the boat and they go next to us on their scooter. <laughs> it is super funny to open the locks ahead of us. Um, and then, uh, then we, we were on the countryside very slow place very very slow so place the, the blocks close as, as well at 6 p.m in the, yeah, in the afternoon yeah. so we so we would just drive until we find the closed lock in front of us and stop and stop yeah, yeah. there was very few boats anyway. around <laughs> um, so the countryside's pretty empty and um, there's almost no liverboards and some leisure boats not many but mostly commercial traffic but we have that sort of story for later we meet more of that later so the locks yeah, so throughout the, the London, the, the French Canal, so we have we go past thirteen canal systems, and each of them has their own way of opening a lock. Some of them have lock keepers, some of them have uh, some volunteers, like the same ones that you guys have here in CRT. Um, but then locks get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the, the, and and they and and um, the boats get bigger, and the boats get bigger as well. And and the systems of opening are different. So they have the, the, the lock keepers, as I said, and then there are there. Are, there are, there are other ones that are smaller ones that have this twisting rope in the middle of the canal. Hanging from a so wire. Hanging from a wire and then there's a sign on the right hand side and it says if the wire is to turn left, is to turn right or if it's push. And each time and it's different. Each time canal. different. Yeah, so we had to go back for those ones lots of times. At the times they were given a remote control, right? A clicker. And we had to, so there was a lock keeper on the first one. 
gave us a key clicker, we need to press the right buttons to open it the was all in French, so very yeah, pretty. Very, very, very so complicated. Each, each time you change the canal, you've got a different way of doing the locks. Yeah. Uh, so this is the first tunnel. This is the map we've got to around here. First tunnel. It's six kilometers long. Yeah. And it had a um, electric powered boat being pulled on a chain. So we were towed through the tunnel. They didn't tie us up particularly well. So we were kind of bashing the sides as we went through. But so I was standing on the front of the boat, putting boys in the way <laughs> while Anna was trying to keep us straight. Uh, but then into beautiful countryside, the yeah, river this, main. This was the way that we chose to get to Paris. So we could have gone through the very commercial route or the scenic route. So we decided to turn to the scenic route towards the Champagne reason and the, the Marne, which was our first big river. Because the, the, yeah. the big route had a tunnel which was two-way with a crossing place in the middle. So I just imagined us motoring along this ginormous barge appearing out of nowhere and crushing us. So we decided to go for the very old, smaller yeah, way. Yeah, by then we were still scared with the yeah. big barges. The big, big barges yeah. are quite a shock because they're <laughs> huge compared to the UK. We get to Paris. Actually, yeah, Amy uh, yeah. To Paris. Anna, Anna's on and off the boat this year because she's still working full time as an architect. So she leaves me in Paris. Um, uh, Paris is a one way system. So I'm by myself single handed. So I kind of turn into Paris, but then it all gets too much, too stressful. So I turn around, and come out again, and find a mooring on the outskirts next to a friendly boat to invite me over and give me lots of beer. <laughs> And after Paris, you have the uh, same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well I carry on the same um, single handed um, up river. Uh, basically, the, we, we never really decided where we we're going to go next, just general directions. So just, you know, whenever we came to a junction, we go well, that way. It's nice. We'll go that way. So we decided to turn to the Yon, the yeah. River Yon. But it's small and beautiful. Yeah, which was the choice of three parts. We had three parts that we could have gone and, and we chose the Yon River that would take us to to some historical uh, towns and then to the Nivernais, which we wanted to do. So it was surrounded by um, very touristy towns, sort of set in aspect, like, you know, set up for tourists. Uh, I think I met you back in Auxerre. Yeah, Auxerre, yeah, so very scenic and um, still French on countryside. And um, we zigzagged between the Yon and the Canal de Nivian. Uh, stop out alongside the small village in the middle of nowhere. Yep, and Anna's morning mission was to go and get croissants and coffee. <laughs> yeah, so this is our scene between the river and the canal. The top, this top left hand side image is as on the river, it's the river yon, and the one on the bottom is the canal. And in the river, so, you've got to kind of worry about running aground, but it's much wider. And yeah. in, the, in, the, in the canal, no problem running aground, but it's much narrower when boats come. Yeah. And then this is more or less what you see ah, when you need to turn somewhere. So in this place, we were maybe on the river, I think, and yeah, then we have to turn. The we have to turn right hand side uh, to the to the canal, so, and then the river continues as a as a, as a weir. Yeah. As a weir, as yeah. a so weir. We just jump and, from and one. So to we the just other. jump between on the other. And then we're more up in the middle of nowhere in general in France. Actually, it's a lot of space, tons of places you can just moor up. Uh, what's this and one? This I is Canal de Nivernais, which is the, yeah. the beautiful canal. Uh, it's this more English English style canal. It's kind of the mm -hmm. scale of an English canal. It goes up a um, hundred locks up over a range of hills and there's no big boats. Very pretty. Uh, this is coming up to the summit uh, and there's a traffic light system actually yeah. it's super narrow because you end up going through these green lanes which are kind of overgrown of with trees yeah. and tunnels and cuttings. So you're cutting through a series of hills. And only a boat fits on the tunnel, yeah. right? And actually yeah. it's kind of raw rock on the sides with bits sticking out. So you're kind of looking out the side seeing all these boulders go past. <laughs> So you go all the way up and then we go all the way down to the seas, which is a town in the center of France. Um, and we get to the river Loire, but we mm -hmm. actually don't travel on the Loire. We do a, a few, yeah, we do a little bit, we have a few meters on the Loire, but then we, we turn immediately to a canal so that they canalize, they leave the river. Runs next to the river. The, the canal, the canal and crosses over it. Right. Yeah. So this is an aqueduct over it. And the whole scale of French waterways is very different to British waterways. It's just ginormously big and grand compared to the very small, cute British waterways. <laughs> um, and, and as the journey goes on, it gets bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's coming up to autumn and we discover that French, the small French canal is closed for the winter. So we have to rush around and find a place to moor up the winter. We find a small um, mining town with a boat club, a kind of, um, you know, an old fashioned boat club, super cheap and very, quite a friendly. And we leave the boat there for the winter. Yeah, and this is our first, that was our first year. And um, then we went back to London. Uh, I was in London already. I wish was on his home for the end of his journey. Um, and we, um, and then we came back again to to France uh, in two thousand and seventeen in March, 
Um, and that's why we did a long, we did a long journey all the way to Linz in Austria. Uh, we gone during seven months, 160 kilometers, five rivers, three canal systems, 185 locks. Like we did a huge amount of locks, and we went through three small ton tunnels. They were all in France, actually, on the French Canal still. Yeah, this is half yeah. large river, half um, small canals. So, so we still start with the canal, small canals. Canal, the central, just yeah. pottering around. There's like over 100 locks up this one. It's a long, slow canal meandering through the French countryside. Um, French canals, yeah. Uh, this one, actually, we come, <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing along in this crane, lifting out the canal, um, lifting out the canal thing, so that they were going to repair a, 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 a canal um, what they call uh, gates, gates yeah. a canal gates, yeah. But actually, luckily, mm -hmm. I was just there for an hour, and they say, "Okay, we can pause the work and let you through." So I just sneak through. <laughs> but um, BNF is much more efficient than CRT. This took them one day to to replace the gate where we have CRT. God knows how long it take. Um, a lot of the canal buildings are actually semi-abandoned, and it's just beautiful countryside goes on. So this is early spring, isn't it? Yeah, and then we get to so we keep going on the French Canal system. Uh, towards the Rhine, uh, always having the Rhine in the, the way that the place that we're the, the, the way that we're heading to, and then we get to the last canal before the Rhine, which the is the Canal du Rhône. Yeah. Um, so we were a couple of days on the River Salon. Um, we got in the canal. This is one of the canals where we were giving were given the clicker. Very cryptic. Uh, that that the first one didn't work. <laughs> so we have to go back. Uh, so we have to go back. And then we passed the second block, and then we were told that we were not allowed to stop. There were signs everywhere saying yeah. no stopping. For the next 10 or 15 kilometers or whatever. It's just a huge yeah. chemical explosive factory, I think. So we just kept so we going. Just kept going. <laughs> Lock ourselves on the boat and we just kept going. Until we got to beautiful yeah. countryside. Uh, so some of the places we met on the way, we yeah, this is a marina on the side here, but of course we tend to avoid marinas and stay on sort of more free places. It's a very long journey, uh, but they have sloping sides often. So this is us more to a sloping side. And they have free moorings, sometimes they have free moorings yeah, as well. Has so a free this, mooring is, here. this is, this, this this is a mooring. huge castle, on the, a huge castle. And actually the, the river goes round the town, but actually the canal goes under the castle in a tunnel. You know, under this ginormous castle, you go under it. Yeah. Um, and then beautiful place in the countryside here. I think I just moored up and went for a swim. And here we're just middle of nowhere, moored up waiting for a lock. And this is just before the Rhine. Yeah. Uh, the last big town before the Rhine is Mulhouse. Uh, we had ordered some bits for the boat to the local marina there. Yeah. Uh, so we knew that we were at the step stop in there. Um, so we stopped to empty so the boat out. So we stopped to empty the boat get, get. out, wait for the bits and bobs to come to the boat to, to, to arrive that we had order. Um, and, and to we, make it ship shape. Yeah, to make the boat ship shape because we were a bit we were, nervous. We were, we were terrified, <laughs> but we'd heard so many stories about the ride. We were kind of terrified of it, yeah. a little bit, you know. <laughs> Uh, so here's the big river. Yeah. Um, we turn onto the Rhine, and of course we see these ginormous ships. If you look ahead of us, oh, that, that is a huge boat. boat. <laughs> it's, like it's probably four yeah. put together, I think. Um, so we actually pause and let it go past, and then, then we set off. Um, but actually, you wanted to go and see some architecture. Yeah, because suddenly I realized that we get into the Rhine uh, just very close to Switzerland, and I realized that we are very close to Basel. And I thought, oh, we are Basel, so let's go and see some architecture. Why not? So we tried to go up river to turn up river into the 20 kilometers of, of river that's, that's to, to Basel that was left. Uh, but there was no way we could not, um, we, we could not move the boat, the boat barely moved. Uh, so we decided to turn around and, and I think that Hamish looked outside and, and he realized that there was, because we were going to, we, we, got we, went, from the center, we went to yeah. the side to try and get some speed, which we did manage to get a little bit of speed, but then looking out the side door, I noticed some <laughs> sandbanks and weeds going past. So I thought no so baggage of that again. So we spun round and went round the, down the right. Um, when you're in these big European rivers with a slow boat, you're going down river. You have no choice because you cannot get back up the river. So once you're on the river, you're going down. And then suddenly the scale changes, right? I mean, the Rhine is the highway of Europe for boats, for cargo boats. And suddenly we are in these big locks. The first lock, they've opened it for ourselves. <laughs> I think they were sorry for us, so they've just opened it for ourselves. And it's 270 pieces long. They were like, yeah, 24 wide. And to be honest, like we, they could fit, these locks could fit 300 boats of ours side to side, inside. So it's ridiculously big. So they have the floating bollards, yeah. which Anna's like, you just loop on and yeah. then the bollard goes up with you. Or they have the ones every cup, every meter every couple of meters where you have to hook on all the time 20 times all the way up which we did on the first one yeah, because so we didn't know about this elevated bollards so, so from then was, on we were yeah. looking for the elevated <laughs> bollards <laughs> and so, some images of the rhine the upper uh, rhine is yeah. quite industrial and full of big boats and a little stressful uh, but 
Um, there are some nice bits. There's parts of the yeah. old Rhine. The top photos is where the where the canalised Rhine in the brown and the old Rhine in the light blue, and um, where the two waters meet. And if you go up the old Rhine, it's back to nature. It's slow, and the current is it's slow, current, and it's yeah. gorgeous. You know, you just drop the anchor and you have a lovely time. Uh, we, as much as possible, we got off the main river and just went into gravel pits and um, just into the old parts of the river or little box bows and things. So this is us moored up in a gravel pit, I think. <laughs> <Go in. laughs> yeah. Uh, then. But of course, like big river could not come without any excitement. So we broke down on the Rhine. Um, we actually, we had broken down before in Moulins, um on the on the French canals. French canals. So there was uh, a noise in the engine, and yeah. then it turns out a, a coolant box had actually vibrated, metal fatigue had fallen yeah. off the engine. But luckily, the VNF people came along, and they were super friendly. And they said we can fix it, and they took us away, welded us, welded us a yeah. new bit, and put it back together again. VNF, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we thought that this piece was going to last for six months at least. Oh, right? yeah, until yes. we till, get till a proper, we do the a proper, yes. a proper We were going to replace it later. Uh, but then we the Rhine somehow. A couple of weeks later, it broke. A couple of weeks broke. later, it just broke again <laughs> because of the, the engine. <laughs> just, our engine uh, shakes so much, <laughs> vibrates so much that it just came out again. So, um, and then and then we stopped in this last little lock before the Strasbourg, and and we were told that we had to wait half an hour to one hour for the big boats to come so that we could go in with them. Uh, and we thought, okay, no, we cannot hold the, the engine ourselves for one hour, so let's switch turn the engine. We turn it off, and then when we were about to turn it on, poof, it didn't come well, on. Click, 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 click. So, the starter motor yeah. died, so so our coolant had pulled off, our starter motor died. So we ended yeah. up stuck on this lock for three days Probably. with a very grumpy lock keeper, so you can't stay there. And in the end, we, we managed ended to, up in Strasbourg. We ended up month. in Strasbourg. We got a tow into yeah. Strasbourg from a local marina owner. Uh, Sprouted, Sprouted was nice, but we had to wait around for a month or so yeah, for yeah. spare parts. We stayed a bit in the marina, then yeah. we met some local people that live. We, we found our first live and work community, mm -hmm. um, and, and we made some friends there that invited us over. So we just moored next, next to the, a line of um, peniches, and they were playing French blues music yeah. every Tuesday. And uh, a nice, nice boat community. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, then one month later, we are back on the back Rhine. Back on the Rhine, yes. And after Strasbourg is the last lock, the last lock before before the, 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 the North Sea. Well, North Sea, yeah. yes. So uh, it accelerates. It just gets fast. It gets very fast. So at one point, we were doing 18 kilometers yeah. an hour in our boat. And this is OK. <laughs> but then you have um, then you have you know, two boats coming behind you and another one coming in front of you. And they have these stone walls to slow the current. And these, you can see them on the side, but they're actually invisible almost out to the middle of the river. And if you go outside the buoys, which were at least a kilometre apart, and go onto these, you'll rip the bottom of your boat out and sink instantly. So you're kind of being overtaken by these ginormous barges ignoring you and just <laughs> overtake you in every direction, and you can't go between the buoys. So it was all a little stressful. There's not much that the barges can do as well, because it's very fast for them as yeah. well, and the, the, the curves, the turns are very tight for them. So and sometimes they have to do the turn on the opposite side yes. of the river. And then they, they blue board us, and we will learn all about blue boarding, which means you have to go on the other side of them. We did play chicken with the barge with blue boarding. That's what we first did. I think it doesn't apply to us. It's more well, uh, it did apply to no, us because yeah. he wasn't going to let me, you know, there wasn't no room to get past him. So we had to do an emergency turn around him. But then we, we, we kind of, we respected the blue balls. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, but it to... was all super stressful. So we turned up on the River on Necker the Necker, to get yeah. off the Rhine just so, to recover. Yeah, so we went all the way to Eilberg, uh, yeah. which was a beautiful town full of, uh, the, the old river is just very green, big valleys, um, full of castles, again, full of castles, almost no current. So it was, what, just what we needed to, so, uh, to take a break from the So after a week on the neck, we're back on the ride. Yeah. Oh, oh, but we were stopped by the police. Yeah, uh, so this is back on the... Oh, this no, no, this is Necker. Right, yeah. Necker, Necker. Necker. Okay, yes, yes. Right. So, so, yeah, so here on the Necker, we were stopped by the police. Um, they saw first, us... First yeah. time they were stopped by the yes. police in Europe. First time, yes. First time that we were stopped by the police. Um, they stopped us. They were a bit nervous and a bit suspicious and a bit worried if we were going to have any documents. And then we did the documents, so they got so happy that they gave us some cake. And so we sat there, a bit chatting with them and telling us about our adventures, and we were very excited about it. And then we were friend, back. Friend of German, yeah. And then we were back on the on the actually then we were back on the Rhine. So we did so. Yes. Oh, this is the main river already. But we went ah, okay. so from the Neckar, we did a few kilometers uh, still up down river to from on the, the Rhine. Rhine. And Just then it turned, was two days for us, I think. Turned to the um the main, to the main, yeah. river Main, which was a stressful turning, but that's a story for another time. Mm -hmm. uh, the main, main is quite um quite it's industrial. Very industrial and 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 and, yeah. and it's it, and the, the, the the French waterways. It's um, in, in, in the French waterways, it's very easy to stop anywhere. In the German waterways, it's, very it's, hard. it's almost impossible to stop anywhere. You can you can only stop in allocated places because it's not that they forbid it, but it's, it's just the sides are just not good to stop at all. 
full of rocks, full of, they are just not good for us to stop. So it's so actually not forbidden, but you just cannot stop anyway. <laughs> so you end up needing to stop in, in marinas, in free pontoons, well, they have them as well. Uh, for instance, in Frankfurt. And anchoring a lot. And anchoring a lot, yeah. yeah, yeah. So for instance, in Frankfurt, we stopped. Um, we in got the, into the center of town. We didn't, yeah. we, we were th there was a, a marina, but we didn't want to stop in it. So actually, we waved at the kebab boat and moored up <laughs> next to them. And they were super friendly and said, yeah, you can stay here. And they actually gave, gave us breakfast in the morning. <laughs> Very friendly kebab. Fish kebab boat in Frankfurt. In Frankfurt, we were getting there, going to say hello. We had some kids jumping on our boat during the night. Because yeah. we were in a park in central Frankfurt. Uh, so the images of the main. Yeah, um, it's beautiful, beautiful. But yeah. it does underwater walls as well. It does. And we've and learned the worst play. Yes, you'll, you'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll tell that story in a little later how we have to do some repairs. Uh, so this is a... This is a lock on the on the main. So in the main, they have, these, they have locks for the big boats, for the big cargo boats. But then on the side, sometimes they have this sport boat lock. That's the, they, they say that I mentioned we didn't fit in the majority of them. But then there was one that we did fit. Uh, so we decided to try and we go, we were going up river, so I got, so we go, we get, we go in uh, and then we need to open the lock, but it's manual. So I had to go out, I had to go up the lock, look for the, the, the there was a machine, automated Super machine, complex all, in written, German. Uh, all very vintage, all very, very, in, all in German, without an English at all. And I had to, 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 to understand how to, to press, I press I'm, all the buttons. I'm shouting instructions yeah. from well <laughs> down in the lock. Yeah, we managed to do it, like, I think half an hour later or so, we managed to do it. Uh, um, but the main was beautiful. Yeah. Um, as I say, we used to yeah. anchor. We so this, this is us coming off the navigation where we just go off the navigation and anchor. Um, and um, by then we'd actually got a, a little inflatable boat called the Ugly Duckling. So we, if we were anchored, we'd get to shore. So this is us using it as a washing machine when it rained. But we went to shore as well. Yeah, and it would go yeah. to shore to get more of the coffees. Mm -hmm. Uh, on um, quite often, it's not really designed for small boats. So here we are waiting for a lock, and there's just no way to moor up. There's a sloping <laughs> side, um, big boats going by, making great suction, bashing you about. You're holding yourself off with a foot, um, and then we grow to hate the speed boats um, because they would rush up to us, making a huge wake, and they turn away, away, wave, hello, hello. We go, no, no, we slow down, and everything would crash around, and the coffee would go everywhere, and we've got coffee stains all over the kitchen because everything would crash around every time a speed boat went past. Yeah. Oh. Well, just as beautiful videos as well in yeah, landscape. So yards. German is very, very beautiful. But as you see, the sides are just absolutely impossible to stop. stop the side, yeah. Absolutely overgrown. It's absolutely impossible to stop. Not um, too big. Yeah. So after now, this is after the oh. so after the main we get so you get to Bangburg and in Bangburg, Bangburg, Bangburg. Um, in Bangburg, we get into the rain main Danube Canal, which is the canal before the Danube. Um, um, and and the locks get huge. huge. I mean, they are not as wide as on the Rhine, but they are super deep. They are like 30 meters deep, which is absolutely ridiculous. And and some of them, they not all of them have the the the, the bollards, the elevated so bollards. So in a few, you actually have to hook all, all the way, way up. down. So you have you have two ropes. Yeah, so you put down, one yeah. on, and then you put the next one, then you unloosen that one, then put the next one, and yeah, you're on this slippy, it's slippy silly. side, all kind of gunk, trying to play with ropes and not fall in at the same time. Oh, and then the water comes from the sides as uh, well. Yes, that's so always that's a surprise. Which is a surprise. Worse, your boat is it's... pushed and spun away from the side when they start to let the water in. It's in. very, that's a very, very difficult yeah. walk for us, for us a as a small boat and, and light boat. Yeah. It's very difficult. And for this us is the too. view from the bottom, looking yes. up at the sky, a little exactly. slither of light. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we've passed through the top. Of uh, we've reached the yep. top of Europe. This is nearly half a kilometer up in the sky. We've gone up from the North Sea and from the coast all the way up you know, for over 400 meters. And we're on the watershed, and from now on, it's all down a hill well, to, this is, this to is the, the Black one, Sea. Yeah, this is still on the main then, yes, yes. of course. Yeah. So one side of the water flows towards the North Sea, the other side towards the Black Sea. Yeah, from here, it's just always on. That's it's always down here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then we get to Danube. So we get to Danube on Kalheim. It's a German town um, at kilometer 2,410 of the Danube. So it means that we have 2,410 kilometers to the Danube, which is still a lot. Um, and we've made already two, uh, 2,500 sure, kilometers halfway. of London. So we are kind of halfway on our journey. Um, it's now the end of August. And, um, and and we were trying to stop in Kalheim because we wanted to think a bit what to do and organize a bit ourselves before we get to the venue, but we could not find a place to stop. So suddenly um, we were in the middle of the river. Middle of the river, no stop. And so we actually found a rusty barge <laughs> and moored up for that for that for the night. Um, and and of course we were caught in floods. Um, um, yes, yeah, the Danube is yeah. famous for its flooding. 
I think was. we got up to 17 kilometers an hour with the flood waters. Normally we only do eight. Yeah, we were caught in this whirlpool. There were whirlpools everywhere. So we got super fast the winds in Austria. So Where we got we to found Austria. a lovely community. Yep. Yeah, Arty boating yeah. community. I mean, landlocked Austria. Um, and we moored up next to a, a barge called Eleonora. Yeah, and they found us. So then, because it was already late in the year, um, and, and we were tired. It'd been we seven tired. months. We hadn't stopped for we, seven months. We didn't know, yeah, we didn't know what to expect as yeah. well ahead. It, we're on the Danube. We didn't know the floods were coming. Yeah, we were. We the didn't know the levels were whoosh, And they actually recommended us to, yes. to stop if we could. So they found us this cheap mooring a bit further, a bit the river from Linz, in a boat, club, in a boat, boat club. club. Yeah, and uh, they. But then the river was, was just too fast. Far, so they actually to they, they were running a bicycle ferry so, with a huge engine, the catamaran. So they actually pushed it on the back of it and they pushed us <laughs> up the river using their huge engine because we probably wouldn't have made it by ourselves. So they really craned us out, and we were a treehouse for the winter um, on an old farm wagon really high up you have to climb up a ladder to get into the yeah, boat yeah and on the Danube we actually need to the boats to get out of to come out of the water oh, yes, for yes. winter because there are so much bloody even with the even with the can with the canalized system even having locks they can, and they can control a lot the the the, 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 the how much the water goes up and but down historically it can flood up um, to seven yeah. meters so your boat might not be there in the spring if you lived <laughs> in the water so we thought best is to take that <laughs> Year three. Yes, Oof. and then we got, uh, yeah, so then again, we went back to London for a bit with the boat so stayed in, 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 in Austria. Um, back to Linz in April. Uh, and then we went all the way down to almost, almost, almost the Black Sea. <laughs> almost. <laughs> almost. Uh, uh, it was just on the Danube. So it's um, 1,897 kilometers, yeah. and that's just down one river. Yeah. And, and it's only four, four locks. locks. Yeah, only four locks. locks. Yeah. Uh, first, we had to get the boat ready. We scrubbed it down to get all the grime off. And um, we'd actually sprung a leak in the main. We'd actually ended up balanced on top of an underwater wall. There was this lovely bay. It was hot. We thought we'd stop and go for a swim. There was no walls on the map. So we turned the engine off just in case and just turned in and coated and boom, 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 boom. The boat was balancing on top of this Bostek. wall. And Bostek. Anna had to jump out. So I'll tell yeah. the story. Yeah, I jumped out. Um, and then there was a fisherman that... Uh, I knew when, this fisherman. Yeah, when I jumped, well, when I jumped in, the guy was actually on the water. And yeah, 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 he was, yeah, and he was helping us to put the boat out. Um, so there was Anna in a bikini, a nudist fisherman, and me with a pole pushing us up a stone wall on the river. It was a comedy moment, <laughs> absolutely comedy, absolutely moment, comedy, comedy moment. moment. But this actually damaged the bottom yeah. of the boat, and we had a slow leak. So there's another reason we took the boat out to fix that. It was, yeah, it wasn't a huge yeah. problem, but we had to replace some things and fiberglass, some repairs. Oh, and of course, on that year, uh, forgot to say that on that year when we were put back on the water, we, we sprang a leak. Oh, we did spring yeah. a leak, yes. So that was a separate thing. That was the, so the, the frozen out. weather had actually frozen the sealant on a, on a repair where we got the boat. They'd taken some bits out and yeah. put a blanking plate in and the sealant had frozen. Um, so when we went back to the water, we had a slow leak. So it had come out and then there was the truck, the, the, the thing to hold us had disappeared. So we ended up spending the night hanging yeah. from a crane in okay. the German boat club for the night before they put us, we sealed it up and then put it back in the morning. Yeah, um, so after all that stress, we deserve a few anchoring, yes, a few yes, anchoring yes. spots, which we did along the way, all the way to Vienna. It's very pretty. Um, so on the, on the image here on the left hand side, you can see the, 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 main, the, river? the main river, which is that light color and then the darker green. Is actually the um, is actually an offshoot where, where where you can just turn just and turn anchor. in and drop the anchor. You and, can drop anchors yeah. almost everywhere as long as you get out of the navigation, which is what we did. Yeah. Then we get to Vienna, um, where we moor up next to some historical steamboats. Very friendly. Um, they, 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 we were guests of the of the Captain Franz. Captain Franz. If you want to buy um, a steamboat. <laughs> Contact us and we'll give you his contacts. He's got lots of nice steamers. <laughs> he, he wants to sell them. Historical <laughs> ones. He wants to sell them. He's very old. He wants to sell them. That's true. Um, um, we were next to a family of beavers who were these huge shapes of swimming around us. It was kind of interesting. And then from this point on, you'll see that our slides are just capital after capital. It's really like the the, 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 the river is fast. The river is fast. The, the, the European capitals, it's one after the other. Mm -hmm. There are almost no locks. So 100 kilometers down the river, you have Bratislava, where you stopped as well. Uh, we stayed in a marina where then we realized that there were lots of historical boats, that not historical, uh, adventurous boats. Adventurous boats over yeah. the last, you know, 40 years or so. There's a, yeah. there's a logbook and the woman runs it, keeps the logbook. So we signed that and put our story in. But we look back to all these people who've done the same journey, which was really nice. We still contacted a few, yeah. I think. Yeah, we've got photos to, of it To all, ask for actually. some advice of the yes. custom thing. Uh, Budapest. Yeah. Um, uh, 240 kilometers down river, we get to Budapest, which is our fifth country, I think. Yeah, yeah. Hungary. Uh, we spend two weeks moored up next to a um, 
a barge, a residential a barge, a houseboat. Yes, yeah. yeah. And he'd actually, they'd, be, they'd cut a barge in half and yeah. turned it into a static houseboat. We're actually invited to stay there yeah, as well. That's nice. <laughs> to some so. friends again. So there is this word of yes. mouth uh, uh, along the Danube. The Danube is like a small family. Once you get in and you yep. and and you and you meet some people, then suddenly they just refer you to the next town and to the next on friend. And on and so, on. so we spend. We, we, we stopped in lots of places that were actually recommended and, yes. and they were invited to stay with them. It was super Which nice. Was nice. Yeah. Uh, out into the woods, it starts to get endless countryside yeah. once you get to Eastern Europe. Um, barges get bigger and the rivers get much wider. Of course, we're going down them so we don't notice, but when you look back, you realize, God, this is a huge river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then after, um, after Hungary, we, we, are, we have to choose between Serbia and Croatia. Um, and, and you can see, you go down the river and one side is Serbia, the other one is Croatia, and then there are lots of islands with flags that indicate which country you are. But the reality is that we need to, oh, we, in Hungary we actually checked out. So now it starts the check-in and check-out game uh, all the way to Romania. We are out of Schengen. Uh, in Hungary we got out of Schengen. So we need to choose which is the country that we are going to check in. It's either Serbia or Croatia. So we check into. So we decided to check in in Serbia because it's more interesting. Yeah, because, and we thought that we heard stories that Croatia was, was a bit more complicated, and bureaucratic. Yes. So, so we decided to stop in in Serbia. So our yeah. first stop in Serbia so is Novi Sad. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. Oh, we said that already. We're invited to moor up um, in the boat club. So again, we came in, just asked around, found a lovely boat club. Said, yes, you can stay here. <laughs> yeah. So we stayed in this boat club for a couple of days or a week. It was yeah. nice. Uh, so. But here, okay, so after Norvis had, but the water levels, the opposite to what had happened the last year, uh, the water levels this year are actually going down dramatically. Um, so we are starting to get into a world of Danube. It's, it's midsummer, I think. And then, and 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 this the, the and this sand that you see near is actually it's the, the river bed. bed. <laughs> and and on our maps, we look at the maps, and the maps is actually water. And we're, we're going like, to anchor there. Oh, it would be nice yeah. if we turn up at the sand, sand and a few trees. We're thinking that should yeah. be there. So we did anchor still, but we've anchored to the river bed. So yeah. we've anchored alongside the island. And so the, there was yeah, these beautiful white sandy islands, and you could just butty up on them and then just throw the anchors onto the side and stay the night. It was beautiful, yeah. very nice. So this was just before. This was just before Belgrade. Uh, um so we got to belgrade yeah yeah and as yeah. usual we didn't really have anywhere to stay organized so we went, came into town and went onto the river sava and we were looking through binoculars and um we were looking around there's all these house boats so we were looking there's a guy looking at us from binoculars. we were looking at him we gave him a wave he gave us a wave um we kind of you know did some sign language he said come over so we went over and board up on his house boat and we were invited to stay and we left the boat there for a month <laughs> very yeah. hospitable people yeah the sava is interesting the sava for for a long, I think it's fifteen kilometers. It's non-stop uh, houseboats. houseboats. Yes. Uh, so there is a kind of a river grab yeah. happening in, in in Serbia along the. So Sava. anyone can build a houseboat <laughs> if there's an empty space. As long as there's an empty space, so there's, you can, there's fifteen yeah. twenty kilometers <laughs> of houseboats going up the Sava, and it's kind of the rule of the Kalashnikov. You know, you turn yeah. on the Kalashnikov, it's your space. And, and I think you can still do it, right? I, I don't think, you think can it still was stick of the past, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of an interesting place yeah. for boaters. Just endless houseboats. <laughs> yeah. It's all self-built. <laughs> Um, yeah, we ended up leaving the boat in, Serb in, in that, uh, in that uh, mooring in, in the Sava for, for almost a month and we went explore the, the, with exploring the, the, the mountains. Uh, uh, yes, the, the mountains, we did. Yeah. We actually, yeah. yes. We did uh, and then we got back to the boat and then... Um, this year, and, this year we wanted yeah. to rest because last year we've done seven minutes non-stop. This year we thought, let's take a break. <laughs> yeah. So then we, we, so still in, so we kept, kept going down the river and then we got into this amazing place, the Iron Gates. Which is um, which is a, a gorge between the Carpathian and the Balkan mountains, um, and here we have uh, the river is is it's sixty meters it's deep. Crazy deep. Part. It's absolutely we, crazy. We had thirty meters yeah. of, of rope and road on our anchor, so the anchor wouldn't actually reach yeah. the bottom if we needed to. Stop. We were actually we got there. We got, when we got here, it was actually the beginning end of the day, right? And um, we were we, thinking of anchoring. Well, we could, then we found some places and, in the gorge where we could anchor, look nice. But then we decided we didn't because we weren't quite sure. So we anchored on the lake outside. And Luckily, we did because like really, our boat just yeah. the anchor wouldn't have reached bottom. <laughs> and just some images of the of the oh, it's very of the gorge, very pretty, pretty gorge. Castles. castles and mountains. Castles and... built in stones, mountains 30 meters deep or more, uh, lakes in the middle. It's absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. Um, and then again, the, the, another country, Ser Bulgaria, after, after Serbia. We, 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 so we decided we ended up not checking in in Croatia ever. Um, 
the police still still came alongside us and asked they quizzed we, us they quizzed are, are we checked in yeah to ask <laughs> us said, no, no, we're on the other said, side no so they talked to the left so when, when we anchored yeah. we always have to make sure we're on the right yes. side of the river and sometimes yes. we'd have the gps out we'd go around a few times yes. i think we're on the right side now okay and otherwise are. they do come and tell you yes, off it, yes, it's yes. we did see that happening and it's yes. like it's, it's silly but it happens um then we get to bulgaria um and in bulgaria it's our eighth country um and we have an option to log in again we need to choose if we are going to log in romania or bulgaria because suddenly we are on the river and we have bulgaria on one side and romania on the other um we decided to check in in bulgaria because we were advised we spoke with some people that were doing the same journey that were going down the river as well more or less as us we they were doing bulgaria so it's, oh, it's let's more bulgaria interesting well, it's more interesting <laughs> let's 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 and then and we thought that we were going to go the, 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 yeah, and the end of the river was going to be romania, romania anyway anyways. so we thought okay let's do bulgaria first to Bulgaria first, so we were here, we were back in the European Union, but we were still out of Schengen. So we need again to, if we need to stop, if we wanted to stop the, in, 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 want to get in, the other side. Yeah, in Romania, we had to check in and check in and again, check out, check in. And it's, there's it's only mess. certain places where you can do the check in and check out. So it's really quite complicated. Yeah. A lot of the places are actually closed when you turn up. So trying yeah, to true. move from one country to another becomes very difficult. And uh, yeah, this is some, um, so, so this yeah. is, so we go down, the, the, so this is the same year, so this is the year of the islands. So um, the water levels the dropped much more, still dropping down, critical yeah. level. Yeah. Um, yeah, some some points there was, um, there was 10 centimetres, we had a sonar by then, there was 10 centimetres under the keel, and there was huge barges of ground belching out smoke, trying to push them off sandbars. But the birds were beautiful, and the sandy outside the islands were great, <laughs> great, nice places to stop for a picnic. And it's very industrial as well. Yeah, um, lots of Soviet, um, Soviet derelict industry around yeah. and nature too. A few, a few sunken boats that were yeah. not, uh, not, on not marked on the map and they were not on the map. Um, we were not on diesel, of course. We, we did, did, yes, because we're dashed <laughs> this year. Normally in, in, in okay. England, we fill up the tank once a year. And that's fine because the year is one tank, 200 litres of fuel gets you a year. In northern France, northern Europe, it was about once every six months. But we discovered that the Danube, it's once every three months because we're just covering ridiculously long distances. <laughs> so we knew we were getting low, but we presumed we still had fuel. So we were tapping the tank thinking, we don't have a fuel gauge. Tapping the tank thinking, there's still fuel in there. And we just had to go 20 kilometres to the next town to get fuel because you you have quite a long gap between where you can get fuel, but actually we ran out, so this fisherman had to come and rescue us. <laughs> we dropped the anchor and the fisherman came and um, delivered um, 20 litres of fuel in old water containers. Of course, that we ended up paying Twice a fortune, much, a fortune yes. for the diesel, but I mean, we were stuck anyway. In Europe, so. filling up with diesel, generally you have to do, do it anything. from garages. So you take a load of old cans mm -hmm. and you, you walk or take a taxi to the garage, fill up with diesel, then pour it all into the tank. There's very few places where you can fill up from a, a hose. Um, yeah, so we are now uh, almost 400 kilometers from the from the Black Sea, or maybe less. Um, and we check out from Bulgaria on the last possible mm -hmm. city that we could. And then you see on this, so this is us going to the customs and, and check out uh, from Bulgaria. And then on this image, on the right hand side image, on, on the on the bottom there you see Romania on the other side so we check in on this side check out on this side and check in on the other side of the river and when we're not checking we're in no man's land <laughs> exactly. we're not allowed to go to the, not to land yeah. anywhere we so. can we can anchor but we are not allowed, not allowed to, to, land. To, to land anywhere yeah. yeah um and then Romania we are we are we are very close to the to the, to the Black Sea um but then the water, the water levels, levels are were getting very, too low and boats boats were turning yeah. back and people were, were running around and saying they can't move anymore so we decided we better call it a day it's been a long seven months. So yeah, and, and our Austrian friends uh, had found us um, a, a mooring place for winter uh, along the, 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 the canal that connects the Danube to, to the Black Sea. The Black sea. sea Canal. Um, so Which, we decided to take it and accept yes, the offer. Yeah, yeah. It was done um, by slaves in the 1970s, political slaves. <laughs> and, we, yeah, and we ended up in this, in a so, friendly... So our host was so. super friendly. <laughs> he had actually run an old Soviet grain port. And um, he got his mates, it was all done at were mates, so he got his mates to, to lift us out using a telegraph planting truck, lifted the boat out, but then that wasn't capable of driving us across the port to where he wanted us to be. So he waved a crane over next to our loaded grain ship, and this other crane then picked us up and dragged us across the port, and the boat dipped, and we actually were dragged across the rail off a little fiber loss off the bow across the port. I was uh, a little worried at the time, but it all worked out fine, and we ended up on a nest of tires surrounded by goats mm -hmm. yeah, for the winter. Was. So yeah. we'll stay there for winter, um, nice. and we came back to London and 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 went back to 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 Romania in in May year four uh, year four and the final year and we're going to be fast now because I think we are extending a bit too much. 
Um, so on this year four, we, we just did four months and we did 622 kilometers by river because we got a bit lost on the delta. <laughs> but then at some point we decided to take the put the boat to give up on Ukraine and everything and it all put got the too boat complicated. too complicated and put the boat back on a track and send it to Berlin. Okay. But the delta was beautiful. It was the river was in flood at the time. You see the water levels coming up. I think it was five yeah. meter higher, where before it had been five meter lower. So the river levels were ridiculous. Very, the way they very got different down. river. Very yeah. different river. So. Um, so we got to Galati in Romania, uh, which is kilometer one hundred and fifty. Yeah. And we'd yeah. arrange a mooring with some London <laughs> boater connection. Uh, there goes our doorbell. We'll ignore it. Um, uh, and the boat's getting bigger, and actually they carry different lifeboats. You can see the little lifeboat go, you carry on, I'll go. <laughs> okay, sorry, Amy said to go and open the door. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, so, yeah, so we are in Galati now. We are, um, uh, so the water levels are getting high. We need to decide what to do. So we stop a bit there. We found that we had a more in, uh, organized by, um, by a, by a London boater. Uh, the father of a London boater lived in Galati, so they found us this place for us to stay. Um, and we were we were monitoring this level. So the one on the top right hand side, it's, it's the level of the water. And, and how much is this, going up? According to this, it says that it's 14 meters higher, which is ridiculously. <laughs> so so it was and then, nearly top in the yeah, And then there is a limitation. So there is a limitation for navigation. So if it goes over, so it, here it's 511. I think if it goes over 520 or 515, we are not allowed to to. And this to, water to, was to coming, coming down from Switzerland and yeah. Austria, and it was just more and more water was coming because it rained a lot up there. So we had a choice of either leaving or being stuck for the next two weeks. So yeah. we decided to leave. <laughs> Head out into the flood. Yeah, so we had down river. We've passed Moldova. Uh, just a few kilometers down river. There is one kilometer of the of the of Moldova. Uh, we didn't stop because it was too complicated, too bureaucratic, and there were these gun posts uh, everywhere. everywhere facing the river. <laughs> and we thought, we've done no, Moldova. Okay. Don't stop. So we kept going down river between Ukraine and and and, and Romania. Romania. Um, again, we are only allowed to, 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 we need to check in and check out in the countries so we to were stop. So, into so we were checked in Romania, so we kept in, in Romania. And we got to Solina, our kilometer zero of the Danube, finally. Um, um, yeah. we, our plans to go to sea, mm -hmm. but there was, um, it was, we arrived and the harbour master advised it was super stormy and lots of current, so we didn't do our sea test and to wait and hang out. So instead so of that, we, we, we yeah. took the opportunity, the flooding, that actually the whole delta was open to us because normally the canals and Rivers through the delta are quite shallow and full of weeds, but because of the flooding, we could almost navigate everywhere. So we set off into the wilderness of the delta. It's gorgeous. It's full of animals, full of wild, full of full of wild, um, wild areas. Just tiny little canals just meandering through. Ooh, they've never they've made it in, no, in a normal level. Normal level. level so level, the floods so. were really good for that. Uh, we we stopped in abandoned villages. Um, uh, this is a holiday camp, I think, over here. It's yeah. abandoned, Soviet era, abandoned. This is the sort of what the canals looked like. Um, and then we got to St. George, which is another... It's a village, by the by, the, by it's a coastal village that um, it's just accessible by water. The, the, the delta is full of these villages that are accessible only by water. So all the province, all the um, food and things comes yeah. by water, yeah. by boat. And here we did our Black Sea trial. Uh, uh, yeah, which actually we aborted because we went out and it was well bouncy. And we were actually going half speed. We couldn't work out why. I think it was because of the currents, because of the flooding. So... Um, also, our, ma our charts were well outdated and we kept going over sandbanks. So we think we're going to run aground, everything's going to be broken from crashing around, and we're not going to arrive where we want to go. Some dolphins came to visit, which was nice, but we got seasick and decided to turn back inland. <laughs> so we are back on the, on the, on the delta, stopping in, stop, stopping in abandoned villages, in lakes, in, in ruins. So we were stopping wherever we could. The, the delta is again easy going and we can stop anywhere, anywhere we find. Uh, but we couldn't do yeah. the main channels because the flood makes the yeah. water too fast. So we're always on the back channels, the small parts. Yeah, we get we, to yeah, Miller so 23. Which is a, it's a very touristic town in the, in the, in the Danube. Uh, it's again, reachable by water. It doesn't have a cash machine. Uh, we ran out of, 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 of money at some point. They didn't have, they, we could not use the cards. We ran out of cash. And, so and I had to get a ta taxi, taxi, to taxi speedboat to, to get to the local yeah, town to get some money to, to buy some diesel people. and some food. Um, but because of the flooding, we were surrounded by snakes everywhere. There were snakes. Um, there was leeches crawling up the outside of the boat. And 
when the sun mosquitoes. went down, there were storms of mosquitoes, but it was beautiful. And the sound was absolutely amazing. Yes. I mean, you can see, yeah, you can hear, you can hear the, the, the frogs and everything. It's the, the animals, the birds, everything. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, so we escape out of the Delta and try to head up river. Um, when the water levels start, start to, to drop, drop yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the, this time, it's the time of Brexit. And um, the, we, first, the first time, the first Mexico's time, so, so, so um, there's a threat of it happening any moment. So we actually we can't be caught outside the European Union because we might not be able to get back into the European Union because we might not have the right paperwork. So so we were kind of stuck. Uh, so we decided to look for a barge or to go back up river. Yeah, and we go all the way up river. So we managed to do a river 170 kilometers, which is a lot. So if you, if you we, come thought, to the, if you come to the side, it, you could did. just about make headway. But then, of course, yeah. we've got a problem. You might hit underwater logs or something, or, you know, some disaster might happen. Yeah. But you, you can go up river on the side. Yeah, so here, I think we found that this place in, in the Viable restaurant. And and we we and and we're trying to organize the crane and truck and then the support for the boat all the jog. And whilst we were waiting, because it was so complicated to actually find something that works, we decided to explore the old Danube, the old waters of the Danube, which was uh, beautiful, as beautiful as the Danube, I would say. The different different kind of beauty. And it's, the people were super friendly because they yeah. don't get many leisure boats or any boats at all. Yeah. So in Braille, we had the experience before. We had had the experience before of stopping on the on the marina, and we were ex overcharged for a, a huge amount of money. And here on the on, by the old venue, we were just saying for free. People were actually Taking happy, us giving, and us, giving us so cakes. Nice. Yeah, very they friendly. Were, yeah, very friendly. Uh, but then we decide we finally get a truck organized, and um, we get a huge um, dockyard crane to lift us up. And I thought I was on the boat, and I thought they were going to take us off the boat, but no, crane went on and whoosh! I was flying on the back of the boat. You see me here on the back, I'm holding on for dear life as we lift up and swung across the port, and then lo lowered down onto a truck. No health and safety in Romania, <laughs> yeah. but it's kind of fun. Yeah, by this point, Amish had as well. We had to come back as well uh, had to Berlin health issues, because yes. Amish had to have an hernia and he had to have an yeah. operation. Yes. So we really had to take the yes. boat out of Romania. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever cost. So, so that's why we were so worried about getting this all this crane working and everything working to, to, so the boat wouldn't be in, in Romania another year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we followed the boat yeah. by train. Took us three days by train. Um, yeah, the boat was dropped back into the water. Yeah. We we were kind of cross fingers, and the truck boat would arrive on a truck. <laughs> we crossed Central Berlin next to the Reichstag. Yeah. A, yeah. yeah Central Berlin. Berlin is um as um. Lots of, as, 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 as lots of waterways, but they, they have, we cannot stop anywhere, but they have lots of free moorings. For so three 24, days. 24 20, hours 24 or three days. Three days. 24, yes. are, some 24, 24 some hours. three days. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, we found a home with some very friendly local boaters in Rummelsburg, yeah. which is a, a bay um, in the east, east part of Berlin, Berlin, and we anchored there for the winter. Yeah. Right, uh, this that's is our so story. This was our adventure all the way to Sulida with an extra where we did after to, to, to Berlin. Um, and yes. this is where you can find more information um, about us. You can us. find our website um, and our Patreon if you want to support our production of videos. We're doing videos about the story. Um, and it's a YouTube channel where our current videos are up. And if you just do a search for Boat in Europe, you'll find lots yeah, of information Yeah, we have everything us. on Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, just follow okay. us because we have more adventures after this. <laughs>